Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is me, Rob Voorhees, Business Development Manager from Exertus Almo, and you are here for Episode 2 of Power Hour Segment, Mind Your Business. We are here with a very special guest today, my colleague here at Exertus Almo, Business Development Manager, Pat Booth. Pat, thank you for joining us today. Rob, thanks for having me, and especially double thanks for referring to me as a special guest that makes me feel like kind of honored, like... You know, there's there's big meaning behind me being here today. Oh, always, always, yeah. I, I'm I'm very selective on my guests, so I I definitely appreciate you uh, going ahead with this. So thanks. <laughs> but um, one of the reasons, Pat, why I wanted to have you, uh, you know, kind of early into this uh, into this new venture of mind your business is because I get a lot of comments um, on a pretty regular basis from customers and colleagues of ours that really think you and I and, and our day-to-day -day responsibilities are, are pretty similar. For those of you who don't know, uh, I work on the audio team here at Exertus Almo. Pat uh, manages one of our uh, vendors. But I wanted to have a conversation with you, Pat, today about the, the term essentials. So before we, we jump into that, why don't, tell everybody what you do on a, on a day to day basis and kind of what sure. your what your role looks like. Yeah, so I uh, represent Legrand and uh, all the brands that we carry uh, within that uh, umbrella. So for those that don't know, Legrand is a is a large company that has several smaller companies that are uh, niched pro AV and the electrical world. Um, it, I, I've been in the pro AV as as you have for some time now. So um, those that, that don't know the brands, you know, Chief Mounts, Daylight Screens, Middle Atlantic for racks and power, uh, Vadio, which is great for collaboration. They have a lot of uh, PTZ cameras and uh, other solutions for the UC world. Um, Wire Mold, which is a pretty unique product in itself. It's it's under the floor raceway and over the floor raceway for conduits. Uh, when you want a really clean design, if you're laying out that, that boardroom and you want to make sure there's no cables laying around, Wire Mold has great solutions for that. Luxel, great solutions for um, AV switching. So there's switches that are really geared to the AV world. A lot of neat features in there that you might not think about if you're not playing in the AV space. And then we have two other lines as well called Sanus and Secura, which also are mounts, but they are more the good and uh, the good and better lines as opposed to um, the best line, which is Chief. But uh, yeah, a lot of similarities between us because with Harman, I know you're busy with all their different brands um, and they you know, go across the spectrum as well. So keeps us on our toes, having to know a lot of different, uh, uh, not only not knowing a lot of different products, but a lot of times the questions we get from sales and the questions they get from their customers can get pretty granular. So um, for me, having the relationships with uh, a lot of the members of the Legrand teams, a lot of their BDMs to be able to go out and find those answers that, you know, just aren't readily available at the tip, uh, tip of your fingers if you're looking online. Yeah, and I think that's I, I think that's what you know. Not to speak for you, certainly, but I think that's one of the things that I love so much about business development, and specifically what what my role entails, similar to yours, is because there's so much that falls under the Legrand line. For an example, um, you know, it, it, would it be fair to say that every project seems a little different because you never know what the need really is it going to be? Is it going to be cabling? Is it going to be power? Is it going to be mounts? Like it's all kind of tied together, but every project could require something different. Yeah. And, and really, again, much like yourself, it's, it's my job to figure that out. So that if somebody comes to me and they're looking for a solution, Hey, I've got this uh, reseller looking for a projector and to put up a new screen, um, you know, always going to hit them with the, you know, the screen recommendation from daylight, which is right there, but also want to make sure that they're aware that, you know, HDMI cabling can come from cables to go. Um, you know, do they have an AV closet? Do they need a rack? Can we put a middle Atlantic rack in there? So always trying to cross sell those other brands because it makes it a lot easier. It's especially easier on the dealer because as, as you know, from, you know, the key to distribution is cutting one PO instead of cutting seven POs. So the, the average amount of time that, um, our reseller partners have to spend on issuing POs to different manufacturers as opposed to just sending one to us just makes them much more productive. One throat to choke, I believe, is the, the phrase that we like to use around here. So, No, absolutely. And and so so a question that I have for you, because, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know many people who who would say like, 
you know, they geek out over cables or, or mounts and things like that. I've always personally been interested in those categories. My background came from consumer electronics all through college, working in big box retailers. I always looked at those products and, and I, I always use the term essential because you can get the best TV, the best stereo components, but if you don't have the proper essential add-on items to those core products, it's like just constantly throwing money out and throwing money out and you're never getting that proper, uh, that proper performance that you paid for. So the interesting thing is that term essential kind of followed me here to, to exert as Almo. What does the term essential, I mean, you're so ingrained with those products. What does the word essential mean to you on a day-to-day basis when you're talking about those products? Well, kudos to Sam and kudos to Beanie here, who's uh, getting a good ear scratching in behind me, as, uh, as everyone can see. Um, the dog's excited, too, about essentials, it, obviously. Yeah, so. Sam Taylor coined the phrase, and, uh, and I've spoken with both our sales leadership on my, uh, my podcast about this as well. Um, it, because the solution, they're essential to the solution because you can get the best display in the world. You can, you can create the best content on a, a media player, but unless you have all the pieces to hang it through the wall, to run cable c- uh, correctly, to manage your power, um, right. you don't have anything. They're essential to the solution. And they're oftentimes just an afterthought to, uh, to a lot of consumers and to a lot of people out there. They'll, you know, like you said, Go to Best Buy, you, you spend $1,500 on a TV. Um, and, and I'm not saying you need to go out and buy $100 cables, but when you're talking about installations, you're talking about quality of products they're measuring by the thousandth of a micron. Um, they make sure that those all fit. So cables to go, for example, they factory test each one of their cables along the line before they put it out there. And a lot of their products have a lifetime warranty. So if you spend a little bit extra on that cable up front, um, mm-hmm. You may not have to roll trucks out to kind of go to fix the problem. What the problem could be simply an HDMI cable fell out the back. It's the same with mounts. You know, you can buy much less expensive mounts um, than Chief. And and Chief is recognized for price. Nobody's going to come to Chief for price. But they do realize that Chief has so many features. uh, They're so user-friendly. They can probably hang these in a, a fraction of the time that they can a, a much less expensive mount. So when you're deploying um, technicians and installers out there to get a job done, you can get that job done faster, more efficiently and save money on the back end, which is where most of your costs come from. So, I, I mean, I think it's it literally is an essential part of the solution to have these products available and to know them and to be able to rep them. And, and you know, uh, having been around as, as well, our most successful salespeople are the ones that are selling essential products. They're, they're selling audio, they're selling mounts, they're selling cables, they're selling, you know, everything that goes along with that. Yeah. It's just the full solution. I, 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 you know, and I, I've used the terminology one-stop shop before I'm trying to get away from it. Cause I feel like it's so overused and, and cliched at this point, but full solution is definitely something I will continue to say. And everything that falls under the Legrand umbrella is what I consider a full solution. I do want to put you on the spot for a second, um, because as a consumer myself, and and you know you you are certainly the same way. Let's talk cables or mounts for a second. So, what would you say if you're trying to educate any type of consumer, whether it's uh, residential, pro AV, what have you? What is something they can look out for to ensure that they're getting the best quality when they are faced with maybe uh, something on the cheaper end that is sold on large third party, you know, websites compared to platinum infused cabling at big box (laughs) retailers compared to maybe what is more prevalent in the pro AV space? How can you determine what is the difference between cable A, B, and C or mount A, B, and C? You know, obviously, we all have our opinions. We all can do our our research online to find out what brands might have the best reviews. But in your opinion, as someone who is with these products every day, what is something they can look out for to really make sure they're getting what they need? Well, I I mean, if I mean... People say it all the time. If it looks too good to be true, normally it is. So if you're buying those cables and you're buying them because they're extremely cheap, 
there's a reason for that. And, and again, uh, back in the 90s, there was a company, I won't, I think they're still in business, so I'm not going to say their name, but they were famous for talking about how their cables were, and their cables were 15 times more expensive than anyone else's. Now, I don't know that the, that, that is necessary in terms of an everyday solution, but you will find better cables are going to be made, made out of more durable materials, they're going to be made out of better materials, they're going to have a more flexible bend radius, and that comes into importance when you're doing a bigger job and you have longer cable runs um, and you need to know what that bend radius is and how well it's going to take those those turns and bends without crimping the cable, without causing a pop, uh, a problem in the, the structural integrity of the cable. Um, and the same goes for mounts. You want to make sure that, A, it's got to be UL listed. Uh, for those that don't know, in the mount world, if they test the mount to be UL listed, that means that they tested, uh, it has to go beyond four times its listed, listed weight before it hits failure. So if you have a mount that's listed for 250 pounds, they test it to 1,000 pounds before it will fail. The problem that you run into, you also have to be cons concerned with, you, you have to know the structural integrity of what you're mounting to as well. So you don't want to go over UL listing if you're you know on old studs or something like that, or you're putting into drywall anchors. So you want to make sure that you're mounting it correctly as well. But again, it's it's a lot a lot of it isn't the quality of the actual mount a lot of what makes them better is um they make them with a lot more features um so that they have the installer in mind if they are doing a, a more massive large-scale deployment so um, putting the mount on the wall uh a lot of the products that cheap has you could put them on the wall and as you hang them you can actually level them post installation so you have some adjustments some micro adjustments either way that you can make them flush you can pull them in out uh, up down kind of left right you can do whatever you can with those uh, those after install uh, adjustments which again if you're putting in a video wall um, if you're doing 20 classrooms in a day it's going to be a lot easier to do that and do that correctly and do it more efficiently with those kind of products Okay, which sounds perfect for somebody like myself, because I will go on record here for the entire podcast community to know that, yes, I hired somebody to hang my TV above my fireplace, because quite honestly, I'm the guy who can never find the stud in the wall, insert, you know, jokes there about that. But um, yeah, I just don't trust my abilities very well. So it sounds like something from Chief might be uh, a well, really yeah, might, might be for you. They may revoke your CTS for saying what you just said. So you have to. Yeah, maybe I should. <laughs> I'm sure. As long you know, as you have PTSD, you're, you're to the design side. Nobody's going to worry about it, right? Exactly. You don't, you don't have and, to turn the that's, screwdriver. That's funny that you even mentioned CTS because another thing, and, and you know, may, this is a, a real plug to what you guys are doing is, uh, you know, the, the Legrand University and, and the educational uh, classes and materials that are offered by you guys are perfect, whether you have your CTS or not, um, because I'm always a big proponent of always be learning. Um, try to pick something new, if not every day, every week on the job. Um, and I know you and I have talked about that in the past as well. And it's a, a handy little bookmark I have on my desktop. But it's phenomenal. Uh, you know, if, if you want to be get product specific, you can get product specific. If you want a general overview, yeah. so for myself, when I came into the role, the products that I knew the least about were Middle Atlantic racks. So that's yeah. where I spent most of my time when I first uh, got into it was, you know, really trying to build up that knowledge base on the Middle Atlantic products, what the difference is in there. And it, you know, it gave me a great overview of the product. And, you know, mentioning a Vixa, I mean, as a mount guy, could we have a couple of questions on the exam about VESA patterns? I, I just feel like, you know, you're kind of slighting all of us in the mount world about that. <laughs> I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that one. Let me know how it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pat, one of the, one of the other things I wanted to, to ask you about again, because you and I share so many similarities and in, in our role you know, one of the reasons why why I even had this idea for for mind your business was because the the business development function um, all across you know the, the country and certainly the world, you you find that every company treats it a little differently. Um, there are some in the business development role that really are traditional outside salespeople. There are others that are dealing only with end users. Here at Exertus Almo, I love it because we really are aligned with nearly every single 
other function, not just that Exertus Almo, but also our vendors and our, our end users, you know, what, if you had to pinpoint it, what is the, the main part of business development, especially here at Exertus Almo that interests you the most and, and why it's, it's so exciting to have this position? Um, for me, it, it just the ability to, you know, work with the sales team to help them uh, when they do get these opportunities, the excitement of, uh, you know, I had a long sales background, so I still get excited when the big sales opportunities come in and, and competitive as can be and want to win those. So love the ability that I can take uh, something from a sales team. We can work with our partners at Legrand to really kind of craft a solution that works for the customer and really maybe recommend some other sister products on there as well. So um, that's the the most exciting part of of the job for me is is working with sales, trying to close these opportunities, try and figure out what we can do, how we can beat the competition. It's, it's you know, again, competitive juices get flowing and, and that's a natural part of it as well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's different than, than several other, uh, the, my last life before I came here, my role was business development manager, but I was on the phone all day talking to actual customers, taking orders from them. So yep. it's a different space. This is, this is the ideal world for me. Um, have always loved working on the vendor side of things, um, have a great relationship with the vendors and, and vendor partners. So um, really kind of being that transition to be able to go and find solutions for folks. And even if it's something as simple as, hey, somebody's having a problem getting a return done, right? Mm -hmm. At least I have an opportunity knowing the people that I know on the vendor side to kind of bridge that and see what we can do to get those those things to be solved. Yeah. And I think, you know, coming from, from our... Uh our mutual love of sports. I mean, that competitive nature, sports. you know, is, is what we, <laughs> what we live and breathe. Um, and, and you, you talk about that in the world of business development. I mean, there's nothing like having a small opportunity become a big opportunity because you were able to identify, well, you know, this customer doesn't just need a rack or a mixer. Now they need a, or a, I'm sorry, an amp or a mixer. They also need a rack. They need the cabling for it. And just watching it build from there, um, is extremely exciting because, you know, at the end of the day, not only are, you know, you obviously doing what your specialty is, but you're helping the customer in the end and they're not going to come back or have a, a, a bad, uh, a bad experience overall. So, yeah, I really, I really appreciate that comment. It definitely resonates with me. And speaking to, I mean, sports, I mean, uh, our group, um, again, not to toot our own horn, toot toot, um, great teamwork. It really is um, the collaboration you know, if you have, um, you know, there's somewhere around 30 of us that represent a wide swath of the lines that are here at Exerter Um, But if you have one, someone in sales that's looking for several different things, even if it's a competing line, I, I've found that um, the other business development managers are quick to hop in and really try and craft something that, again, will work the best for our sales team and their their customer base. Yeah. Hands down. I appreciate that. Well, Pat, we, we are nearing the end here of this episode. Um, I like to call this portion the finish line because, you know, coming from an avid runner, I love the thrill of the race. I love crossing the finish line. There is nothing like it. What is one tip or best practice you could share with all the listeners out there today that, that will help push them over the business finish line this year, whether it be you know, increase learning or profitability? What What's something that can help everybody out there? Um, something I, I, I think about and often um, talk about is communication. So um, the ability to effectively communicate and communicating isn't, you know, it's not just an email. It's not just picking up the phone and, and, and calling someone. It's, it's how you listen, how you respond, um, how you interact with somebody when they talk. Somebody once said to me, Everything starts with a conversation, um, and that really kind of rung true with me, and it's stayed in my head for many, many years. Um, it, it's really uh, something I, you know, I'm 52 years old, and, and something that I've wanted to work on and have worked on the past few years is uh, becoming a better listener, because I've often found that while in conversations, um, I would sit there, and as somebody's talking, I would drift off and think about what my reply to them is going to be, or think about how that relates to me, and then talk about myself. And um, I've really tried to get away from that. I've really tried to um, approach it that um, I can be better and I can come across as a much better communicator if I'm actively listening to what someone is saying, then think about it, then craft my response. 
Um, just doing that simple thing, I think, has made uh, me much better in a lot of different roles. Um, you know, husband, father, uh, business development manager. Um, I coached football for a long time. Um, and, you know, as I often will say, I if I can teach eight and nine year old kids how to run a spread offense, I can do anything in the world. So. <laughs> Amen to that. And I, I really, I appreciate those comments because I, I know, again, you and I share so many similarities, even in our family lives and, and being husbands and fathers and, and family men, so to speak. And, you know, it's like what, what we used to get told growing up is, you know, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Um, so I think, you know, I will certainly agree with you that listening is a, really a skill set that especially in the business world will absolutely help you because that's how you identify, you know, what, what does your customer actually need as opposed to what you want to tell them or what you want to sell right. them. And that's what differentiates us on, on our business development team, certainly. So I, I really appreciate that. And if there was a tagline for this episode, I would just say the essential is communication. And I think that really sums up what, what not only we do, but you do specifically. So uh, that's definitely it's also be the, the title of my autobiography as well. So you might hear from my attorneys on that one. Just, you know, throw me a quick mention in the, in the, what, what is it? The foreword. The, I'll, the I'll acknowledgements. I'll, I'll yeah, have the acknowledgement. The quick acknowledgement. I appreciate that. <laughs> Rob, thanks for having me, man. This was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. No, Pat, thank you so much um, for all of you out there. I, I would leave you with a final word of, of be sure to, to look out for uh, our upcoming E4 experience uh, stops. We're going to be in D.C. in the month of March um, and then Chicago in the month of April. And then before you know it, it's Infocom season out in Las Vegas this year. So we hope to see you guys all at those events. And last but certainly not least, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel, uh, the Exertus Almo channel on YouTube. That is the best way that you can stay up to date with all future episodes of not only Mind Your Business, but the entire Power Hour podcast. So please, again, be sure to like and subscribe to that and always leave comments uh, if there's any subject matter you'd like us to cover next. Pat, thank you as always, and we will see you next time, everyone. Thanks, Rob. Go Bills.